Yes, I love the audience participation. I always enjoy that part the most. Thank you for your patience while I get this set up. I believe it is time to start, and so I will. Perfect, we are also live, being recorded. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. I know it's the last day, and I appreciate you all being here. I have a couple things prepared, and I am ready and willing to modify it a little bit based on what you all are interested in hearing about. Uh, there are two parts to my talk about squashing DEI bugs and how to find and resolve common barriers to contribution. One part is what Steve was talking earlier about, the gender mag method for looking at a project from a different perspectives to identify different ways that through unconscious bias we might have missed ways that the project could be more inclusive and welcoming. And the second part is about what are common barriers, what's a framework for us to think about the barriers that we have in open source. And so, so those are the two things that I have prepared. And I know we only have 20 minutes. So is there a particular part, one or the other, the process or the framework that you're more interested in? So I'm going to see who is more interested in the process, who is more interested in the, the barrier framework. About 50-50. Okay, I'll try to spend about equal time on both then. So I want to, I, I want to thank Anita Sama because uh, she is the one that introduced me to what I'm presenting today. And she's also the co-author with me on a book we're working on for inclusive open source. So if you're interested in that topic and in the book, feel free to talk to me about it afterwards. We have a diversity problem in open source. I'm going to skip over this part since we're at the end of the day and we have heard many times the challenges that exist in open source. And I'll go straight to unconscious bias. Unconscious bias is a problem because we are not aware that there is a problem. And I'll, I'll illustrate this. When you navigate through the city or navigate somewhere, how do you do it? Do you pull out your phone and just have Google Maps take you places? Or do you navigate by looking at sites? Where's the Space Needle? Which skyscraper am I close to? Where's the sun? And, or do you have a map and a compass? There are different approaches to getting from where you are to where you want to go. I'm personally like, I'm more on the left side here, where when I'm in the city, I turn off my phone and I just walk around and hope I don't get lost. And usually I find my hotel back again. But there are others who, even in their own cities, they always turn on navigation, they always use support to get places. And the point that I want to make here is that we have different approaches to solving problems. And research has shown that there are archetypical groupings of these different approaches. And they just happen to fall along the gender line, which is rather peculiar. And if we look at the five, um, five things, motivation, computer self-efficacy, uh, attitude towards risk, information processing, style, and learning by process versus tinkering, we can see that a stereotypical man, and these, the, all of these exist on a spectrum. There's very few clear cut here. I, I'm just saying in general, and this has been validated by research, there is that divide where motivation is men like to learn the technology and tinker with it, and they just try it out and if something goes wrong, they go take a step back and try again. Whereas, and, and they have that impression that they are in control of the technology and they should be mastering it. Whereas women, on the other hand, are using technology because they want to get a task done. They think they 
should understand it, but are like, it must be me, not the technology that's wrong if something fails. And the, they want to understand, okay, if I click here, this is what's going to happen. They like to have the uh, process already in mind. And if something doesn't go quite, then something is wrong. And there's a lot more to this. This is just in really broad strokes to say there are differences. And when we have that, those different approaches, and as we create open source projects, that goes into the documentation that we provide. This is how we try to help newcomers come in. We think of the way, OK, what helped me? And that's how we write the documentation. This is how we write the readme. This is the, how we structure the issue tracker. So it supports our way of thinking. And when, when we have a predominantly male-dominated group of people in open source, then the way they think and support others is going to support that way of thinking and problem solving. And so that's where it's really good to step out of that and think, OK, if I was trying to solve it from a different perspective. And that's where, where gender mag comes in. And this squashing DI bugs comes in. And to make it very simple, three steps. We discover problems, we understand them, and we resolve them. To give you an example, if I come to a project and I want to fix a bug or, or a documentation issue, how do I go about doing this? So I, I look, and it's difficult. My readme, or the project's readme, only says how to help contribute code. It, it's the same process as someone who is an open source. I understand the pull request model, et cetera, et cetera. Someone who is new still needs to learn that. And so as someone who wants to just fix documentation, there's no guidance on how to fix documentation here directly. One way to solve that, this is step three, is to work, uh, add a section, work on documentation, provide the guidance. Here is how you can actually do this. And be very specific. Write out that process. Support that other way of thinking. That's an example for these three steps. To go into it, the discovering is we first look at what are the different motivations, the different goals that someone comes to us with. What do they want to do? And we can group them by different places of the open source project, whether they want to work in an issue tracker, they might want to look for a good first issue, and the install guide, they probably want to install the software somehow. If they come to the website, maybe they're looking for how to contact someone. So we can use this, what does someone who comes to the project wants to accomplish? And then we know how to do this, since we've been in the project for a while. Let's write down the steps. What is actually required to accomplishing this goal? And take a moment to think it through. And then, this is where we get out of our own skin and put on the shoes of someone else and say, OK, if I were someone who does it for enjoyment, how would I go about doing these steps? Or if I was someone who wants to just accomplish a task? How would I do this? And I, I try to think in that way. And don't necessarily try to do it by yourself. Find two friends and do it together so you get a more holistic view and a good conversation going. And there's a form you can use where, as you go through each step, you can say, yes, this step was good. Nah, maybe I would not have figured this one out. Or nope, this was a clear that there was no way for me to know this is the next thing I needed to do. And once you document that for each of the steps and actions, the, these are different forms. Um, what you then do is you have a list of here are all the places where someone coming to the project would not have figured out what the next step is, or the next step was not entirely obvious. 
And for, for example, when you want to edit a file in GitHub, how obvious is it that you have to create a commit? As someone who has never worked with a commit uh, system with an log with a git log or github before i just want to save a file and suddenly i need to create a commit that there's a mismatch between what i know what i want to do so figure those things out and then do this a couple times put yourselves in the shoes of different people that come to the project and that's one way to find those di bugs and then you can actually start thinking about doing them so in short, these are three steps. And there's a process you can follow to understand, discover, and resolve the DI bugs. And if you are looking for those forms that I briefly went through, they're on this website. The personas that you can put yourself in, they're well described on the Gender Mac website. All right, that is the process I wanted to share with you. Now with common DEI bugs or barriers that we come across. And this is a research project. I want to acknowledge everyone who has worked on this. They put together this study together with the Apache Software Foundation to understand what are the barriers. And they used a survey and then interviews and also looked at the contribution data with, um, with Grimoire Lab from Chaos to understand this. The interviews, and this is for, for background information so you know where this came from, it was based on 221 surveys and then 19 interviews that really went deep into the issues that were discovered. And it resulted in a framework of barriers. And this is the part I wanted to get to with you today. The, so how do we think about barriers? They can exist across three categories, technical, social, and process. And they also exist across different levels of the project. And this is at the Apache Software Foundation. So at the foundation level, or at the project level, or at the individual level. And what the, the question we ask here is who has the agency to fix a challenge, to fix a barrier, to do something about this? And then what type of challenge is this? So if you're curious what we found, the majority of challenges occurred at the foundation and project level, not so much at the individual. And they were mostly related to process, social, and then technical. And here's a graphic to really visualize where those challenges were. Now, once we, have, once we have this way of thinking about barriers and think about, okay, where do I look for barriers and how, where do I know to find the person or the group of people that can fix it? We can actually start doing something about this. And I want to give you a few examples that we have come across. One is process challenges. Things like it is not super clear how the idea of rough consensus works and how to proceed if rough consensus cannot be reached. That's a Apache Software Foundation specific thing about rough consensus. Another process challenge is switching from one man coding to a community approach is something hard. If someone who's worked in open source, it, it's a different skill set, sure. So how do we support process barriers? Here are some three recommendations that came out of this research. One is provide clear guidance on the governance process. Help people understand what the process is. Provide regular training and provide trainings and best practice tools for reviewers. So that's a very specific process, the reviewing process, where we need guidance on. I am aware of the time that we only have two minutes left. So I'm going to do real quick with technical. Two recommendations are to use automated tools and new technologies. 
Automated tools have a really interesting effect, especially if you use CICD to provide feedback on like formatting stuff. You take the load off the maintainer to push back against those norms that you established. And it's just the machine that says so. And it's easier on a social level for both the contributor and the maintainer has to spend less time. The contributor feels less um, talked down on by the maintainer. Just as a side note here, uh, be proactive and start the con communication and really help people say, yes, okay, have you done this before? No, here, I'm happy to show you. And then for social, include minority groups in the DI discussion, promote minority focused online meetings, leverage both public and private channels and disclose their visibility. And we just had a fantastic talk right before this one that talked about many more suggestions. And there are lots of things that we can do. My goal was with you to think about this framework who has the agency to do something? Is that the foundation project or individual level? And is it a technical process or a social barrier? And with that, we are at time. Thank you so much for joining me today and for being here. I appreciate you. And I hope you have a wonderful evening.